So today, guys, I'm going to show you an efficient way of making a farm that will get you infinite stone and wood, which are the two main things people will care about, I'm sure, but also the resin, gradle fires, ancient seas, basically everything that the gradles drop that spawn from one of these things. Now, I want to start this video by saying I'm not claiming this design is entirely unique and that it's not been done before. There are many videos on YouTube that talk about things that are very similar to this, and I'm really not trying to tread on anyone's toes or anything. A lot of those videos were very long and let's play style this is just an efficient tutorial on how to make it from start to finish and uh, i'm not trying to steal anyone's credit or anything like that just doing the video in a different way so i want to like, iterate that from the very start and uh, hopefully you guys get what i'm saying this is just a tutorial on how to build this thing so if you guys want to see this sort of stuff live and you have any questions for me do check out my twitch where i regularly stream valheim content but let's get into today's tutorial so the first thing you need to do is find yourself one of these great or spawners which will look like this now these are always found in black forest biomes but sometimes you will find one per biome sometimes you'll find several and sometimes you'll find none so all you can really do is explore different black forest biomes until you find them if you farm one early game before you're ready to make the spawner farm i recommend that you mark it on the map with some sort of marker so you know where it is to come back to later now just to say gradles will of course be attacking you i am currently in cheat mode and i'm in ghost which is why they can't see me but you will need to be prepared when you come to this thing with some good armor weapons and food and that sort of thing on the note of preparation, it's also not a bad idea, particularly in survival, to make a little base nearby where you can sleep, have a portal back to your main base in case you die so you can get back here very quickly. But sleeping is the big thing because you will then avoid the night time. We are going to spend a lot of time in this area, of course, building the spawner farm in survival mode, and there will be a lot of mobs that spawn here at night time that can be very difficult. So the first thing you need to do once you have your spawner is to stop any great horse from spawning, and uh, that will then enable you to build the rest of this farm in peace. So while you're doing this, obviously you are going to need to fight these dudes off, and that's why we want the good armor and stuff like that. But uh, what we're going to need here is a hammer, an axe, a hoe, and a pickaxe, and that will enable us to clear all the obstacles in the area. So for example, some of these trees might be a bit in the way, we can chop those down. Some of these things right here, these little branch things right here, we can get rid of these. And so by having all of these tools, you've got everything that you need. Then what you want to do is go ahead and get the 2x2 two two wooden floor, put it very central next to the spawner and get it very close up to it. So about there is as close as I can get. I'm going to build one, two, and three. Now this is not an exact science. It depends on your spawner and how close you can get to it. Each of them can be a bit different depending on the terrain. But we're essentially going to go three out in all directions and then fill in the gaps. And the way that we can do that is once we've built our first one, we can go ahead and go one, two, and three. And we're snapping all this so we know it's lined up. And one, two, and three like that. Then we can come out here by one, two and of course number three just like this and again this is a branch we'll have to take down in a minute using our axe and just do this the whole way around so at this stage you should have something that looks a little bit like this and at this stage no gray dwarfs should be able to spawn as they will not spawn on any man-made or viking made i should say structures and of course these are all made by us now what you can do is just like run back a little bit here and just watch the spawner for a little bit and see if any are spawning to double check but if you've done this correctly then this will be good and you're ready for the next stage so the next thing to do is go to one of the corners of this farm and grab your hammer out and we're going to destroy this block right here now at this point potentially gradles could spawn in this area it depends again on your exact spawner and that sort of thing so do be a little bit careful but you're not going to have many spawning and you do need to be able to fight gradles with relative ease to make the spawner farm because at the end of the day we're going to have to fight them off throughout the thing to do now is to go and grab your pickaxe and we're going to dig down and we're going to dig just straight down like this until we can't dig down anymore, trying not to hit the actual wood there like this. So we're just going to go right the way down, which will be 16 in total, until we're down to a point where we cannot go down any further. So you'll know you've dug the entire way down when you're hitting the floor with your pickaxe and nothing is happening. And then if we look up like this, this is the depth of the hole right here. So now the game plan is to essentially follow this wood the whole way around just like this and make a bit of a shape, like a square shape, the same as the outline of the wood with some rock in the middle and again you'll see this in a second what i need to do now i can see i need to go in this direction so i'm just going to look here and just give that a couple of hits like this and here we go and then we're just going to follow this all the way around so at this stage you'll have something that looks a little bit like this now a couple of things to say first of all you're gonna have this big pit here in fact let's jump down i'll show you this um so in order to get out it depends like what stage of the game you're at in terms of stamina and jump ability and stuff like that you might better just scale the wall and get out like this but if not, it is a good idea to like make another section out here or something, have some ladders or a ramp or whatever you want to do as a bit of an escape strategy in case you need to get up and down. And you're going to have to do a bit of that anyway for repairing your pickaxe. But this right here 
is what it will look like on the inside. It's so got this big bit of rock here in the middle, and we can go all the way around it. Now, don't worry that it doesn't look pretty just yet. We'll uh, make it look pretty later on. Looks like I missed a little bit here. We want to make sure this is all down at bedrock. There we go. Uh, so now, the next thing to do is start chiseling away at this middle bit, but you want to leave a very thin bit of stone in the middle. So what we're going to do just come to the edge here like this. We can just mine away at this. And we start with these like thicker bits that you can see here that are like where it's clearly out from the uh, the center. And we can start doing this and just get closer and closer in without getting rid of the middle bit. So we want to be a bit careful about how we do this and uh, just, just take our time. It's more important that we get this right then do it quickly. Okay, so then you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. As you can see, a nice thin pillar here like this. We might be able to chisel away a little bit more of this, but it's a little bit scary at this point, and uh, I wouldn't want to lose anything. So we're going to just have it like this, and we're ready to progress to the next stage. Hey guys, Kaizen here. Just wanted to quickly stop mid tutorial to say, if you guys want to see this type of Valheim content live, I'd love to see you over on my Twitch. Things have been great there recently, and it's really fun to hang out, and I can answer your questions in real time. If you have any questions about this farm or anything else my link will be down in the description i hope to see a few of you there let's get back to the tutorial at this stage i like to make a little bit of a way in way out and this is going to be later on used for things like the storage of the farm and the afk area so pick a direction and it's good to go up to land and just have a little check the direction you're going in is going to be reasonably good to go in so we're just going to head in this way there's not too much in our way there anything that is we can deal with so then i'm going to go back down into the hole and uh, line up with the center bit here go off and stand next to it and just hit and it will take you slightly up anyway and if we keep repeating this process you're basically going to make a ramp to get out of here um, now this is going to be useful as we're going to be placing down the hearse in a second uh, which are used for killing the gray dwarfs now if you're here thinking don't they take damage yes they do but it is not a problem i'll explain that later on but i just wanted to cover that point because obviously they did do an update where all of a sudden the hearse starts to take damage while it's dealing damage and for some people uh, might be thinking that means the farm is not going to work but i assure you that it is okay that little bush there we go so we've got a nice little ramp in and out here for ease of access so next up we're going to place down the hearths and the way that we're going to do this is uh, grab them here you see they kind of overlap like this with the stones so you've got a bit of freedom in how you place them so our first one we're going to place down like this and try and get the corner of it just overlapping there about like that now there's gonna be a bit of trial and error when you're doing this potentially place that one there like that um, but you can generally get it about right then what you can do is just line that one up there with the edge so we place that one there like that Line that one up with this edge, place that one there, just like that, making sure it's nice and close to the stone, and then do the infill and line that one up like that. And there we go, that is looking pretty good. It covers the entire way around, and basically the grey dwarfs are going to come down and fall into these hearths, and then they're going to be set on fire, and that's how we're going to automatically kill them. At this stage, I'd like to preempt a question that I'm sure will be asked and answer it for you, and that is, can you use campfires or bonfires instead of hearths? The answer is yes, yes you can. Now, this obviously means that it might be available for you to make the farm at an earlier stage of the game. However, the hearths are more durable and burn for longer, and you'll need fewer of them. So it is a bit more efficient to use hearths if you're at the stage of the game where you can do that. But yes, you can use campfires and bonfires instead if you wish. It is another option, so you can make this farm your own if that will suit your needs better. So when the Grey Dwarfs are on fire, they can take damage. One thing they can't do is jump, which is an interesting mechanic. So what that means, what we can do is go around here and just place like a little lip like this. We're doing this with wood. You could do this with some of the big uh, stone blocks if you wanted to as well. It build up a couple of those. It might look a little bit nicer, but it is obviously more cost effect, uh, effective to use the wood, I should say. Uh, now, obviously once you've got this farm up and running then you might want to come back and upgrade this and stuff i'm just trying to look at like what is going to be a really cheap way of doing this so that hopefully you can build them sooner in your world um so then we can get this one up here like this now if it's like that like snapping it on is going to be like is it close are they going to fall down onto the wood which is what we don't want just hold shift and go a little bit over like this and do like maybe about there should be good we can get it pretty close because they're going to fall from here so they shouldn't fall on, but if you just want to be careful with that, then we can just like do this and, uh, you know, build across by snapping again. There we go. Now here we've actually got a little bit of natural wall here, and then we can build around this like this. And of course the stone wall means that as we're building the wood into it, uh, we're not going to need to place anything underneath it because it's going to be held up by that just like this. So we go ahead and do this the whole way around, and this will keep them nicely in. So again, this one here, probably going to be okay, but just for the sake of being, you know, safe and stuff, should bring it back a little bit to like there snap this all the way around and the next stage is to go around and light up all of these hearths and be careful that you don't fall in and set yourself on fire so here we go Ooh, like that <laughs> there we go place the fire uh, the wood down start the fire we're out of wood really 
Okay, let me get some wood. So all of the hearths are now lit. And what we can do at this stage is actually start testing the farm out. So we're going to go ahead here and just get rid of all this wood that we see here. And uh, once we do that, Gradle should be able to start spawning on that middle bit. And be careful not to fall down like this. But if you do, if you're around the edge when you're destroying the uh, wood like I was doing there, you should fall down onto your bit of wood rather than into the hearth. So do be careful with that and get rid of all of this wood. Now, if you've got a situation like I have right here, where uh, when you look into the middle of this, if we can just see in, it's not really flat. It's not ideal for them spawning. You see a brute has spawned down there and he's attacking things and whatever, uh, but he is about to die. But it's a good idea. Just get your hoe out, get it onto the flattened ground and just look at that. Move it nice and close here without falling in and just give it a little bit of a flatten like that. There we go. Now that should hopefully help with the spawn rates. Let me watch this and see how this goes. If you do hoe the middle bit, just be careful because when uh, I did it to mine, for some reason down the bottom here, uh, a load of land came in and uh, had been like hoed, uh, you know, to like cover in the uh, the hearth. So that's not so good. There we go. Now we've got rid of all that. It's back on fire. So are we, but it's okay. <laughs> and uh, the great horse will start to die once more. Now, as you can see, they're all on fire down there and they are stuck inside. They're running around. They're trying to get out. The shaman's healing them, so he's not helping us out too much, but uh, they are, for the most part, spawning in here and dying. Now, you see there the brute, for example, he is attacking the wood, right? And this is another reason you might want to upgrade to stone around the outside, because you see these wood things here are taking damage, but not a lot, right? Like, only little bits, and as long as it doesn't get too targeted in one area, you should be fine. Now... There are some ways around this. For example, if you wanted to, if you've got bulk wood, why not build a second, a third, even a fourth layer? You could really go to town with this depending on how long you may want to AFK. The other thing you can do, of course, is simply come back and repair these as you go along. Every Probably every couple of hours, again, you might want to play around with this a bit, but there are ways around it. And then, of course, you can make it strong with the stone, as I said. Essentially, the whole point of this is just keeping them in the fire, as you can see. And look at the drops we're getting here already, by the way, guys. I mean, this has been running like literally five minutes right so now your drop rates can vary because i've made a couple of these when i was testing and uh, i would say this is on like one of the higher end ones that i've done in terms of drop rates but certainly like if you afk this for a few hours you're going to get a ton of all of the gray dwarf drops so now just a couple of final thoughts for the farm first of all depending on how long you're going to afk here you definitely do need to look to repair this stuff uh, if i get my hammer out here you see how damaged this is getting so it might be something that like every 15 minutes or so you can come back and repair it maybe every half an hour depending but honestly if you get yourself like a bulk load of wood i would just build two or three of these up and then come back and look to repair them every now and again and once this farm is off and running and you're getting all the drops that you've got from it you will have a ton of stone and at that stage it might be worth upgrading to a couple of stone blocks around here to sort of repair it uh, less frequently and have that extra durability because if they break these they will come out and attack the fires and break them so then the farm stops working however if that does happen it's really not the end of the world you can just come down and kill them and you know repair it pretty simply um so, so it's not too bad but i just did want to mention it so that you know that it's worth building the two or three layers then you can have a little afk area somewhere up here where you can go inside the house here and just kind of chill and wait and you'll be here nice and safe and the farm will be working while you're afk I recommend having a portal obviously back to your base you can get to and from obviously all of the drops here you can take in and out of a portal i've also made a bit of a path here like this where i can walk up and down you may even want to make like a path that you can bring a cart up and down so uh you know make it nice and flat that sort of thing and bring the extra drops because you're going to get a ton of drops from this now obviously you're going to need a place to store all this stuff but you guys uh, i'm sure are intelligent enough to figure out your storage system whether you build that here in your main base or whatever is up to you i just wanted to cover the mechanics of the farm today as quickly and efficiently as possible so uh, as i said guys i just want to reiterate at the end of the video what i said at the start this was not my design as such it's something i've been working on i mean the game mechanics there's only so many ways you can do this there are a lot of videos on youtube that show these kinds of farms and some of them are very similar to this there are so many out there that i can't really link them all but my only goal with today's video wasn't to say this is my unique design nor was it to steal credit from anybody else it was simply to do an efficient tutorial on how to build this because a lot of them are more let's play styles whereas this is more to the point so just want to reiterate that i'm not trying to tread on anyone's toes or anything like that uh, i hope you enjoyed the video today though guys i just want to say thank you so much for watching and of course here come the dad jokes when i had to have my two feet amputated my best friend said he could no longer be my friend as he was lactose intolerant. I was going to tell a farmer some jokes about some sheep, but he'd already heard them all. Where does a farmer get his medicine from? A pharmacist. Where do cows like to go on holiday? Moo York. What do you call a magic cow? Moodini. What do cows read in the morning? The moose paper.